Hi, everyone. My name is Mike Riley, the founder and editor of journalisttoolbox.ai. And today I'm going to walk you through a little chat GPT plugin that's very useful for journalists. It's called Scholar AI. Uh, it's a plugin uh, that allows you to uh, search thousands of academic journals uh, and uh, summarize uh, what you find in them. Uh, and then turn them into things like Twitter threats uh, and make them uh, yeah, useful. Um, so uh, if you want to, uh, hit the pause button and uh, grab this little link here. Uh, just type it in bit.ly slash ICFJ Scholar AI. Uh, and uh, you'll be able to access this document on, on view only. Uh, and it walks you through uh, how to set up uh, chat GPT plugins, which I'm going to uh, show you here in the video. Uh, and then we'll get into you actually using Scholar AI. So uh, just take a second to uh, load this in and then we'll get started. All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, by now you should have uh, this document open. Uh, it has background on ChatGPT and also step-by-step uh, -step instructions on how to install uh, plugins into ChatGPT. And I'm walking through it right now uh, if you wanna learn how to do it. Um, you, in order to have plugins, uh, you have to have ChatGPT Plus, uh, which costs twenty dollars a month. You know, it's a little expensive, uh, but it opens up ChatGPT into uh, uh, other uh, areas and allows you it allows ChatGPT to interact uh, with other outside tools. These plugins. Um, so, if you have ChatGPT Plus, you could go down here uh, in the lower left hand corner. You have your uh, login here. Uh, and you can go to your settings, which is right down here. Uh, and you can go into beta features uh, and turn on plugins. You see, I've got like Code Interpreter and these other uh, tools that I could turn on. Uh, but you can turn on your plugins and then click on GPT-4 up here, which is part of Chat GPT Plus. And it'll give you this little pull down menu. And at any given time, you could be running three uh, of these plugins at once. Uh, so uh, I've got Daygram up here, and you know this is uh, Scholar AI. Uh, I can hit the pull down menu here, and it lists uh, all the ones that I've uh, loaded into ChatGPT. I've got about 15, 20 of them here. Um, and down at the bottom of this pull down menu, you have what's called the plugin store. And the plugin store allows you to search through, uh, you know, hundreds of different plugins. Uh, you know, it shows you the ones that you've installed. Uh, you can go out and search for, you know, popular, new. It lists all kinds of different ones in here. And uh, you can also uninstall them if you're done using them. Um, to activate the ones uh, in this top toolbar, you just go through and hit the little check mark next to the uh, uh, tool. Uh, and I'll go through here and uh, make sure Scholar AI is checked. Uh, and then it's up and running. Okay, uh, so now that I've got it installed, um, I want to do something with it. Uh, I want to go out and search some academic journals and pull together uh, some research on a certain topic. You know, it can be anything. Uh, and I've given you one prompt down here at the very bottom of your handout. Um, I always tell it whenever I prompt, I tell it which app to use. A, a lot of times you can just type in, you know, summarize research on redlining housing segregation in New York City, and it'll automatically go find Scholar AI. It knows to do that. However, uh, just to be safe, you know, because sometimes I have very similar tools that'll do, you know, multiple uh, uh, tasks. Uh, I like to tell specifically what to do in my prompt, what, what app to use or what plugin to use. Sorry, I call them apps. Uh, anyway, use Scholar AI to summarize research on redlining housing segregation for New York City. I'm going to go ahead and grab that, drop it down here into the message area and hit the send button. Uh, it'll take a minute uh, and it'll uh, select uh, uh, Scholar AI. It'll say it's using this and it'll start to pull the research. Um, now, with any tool, you know, if I was searching in Google for this or Google Scholar, um, you know, I wouldn't just take, you know, whatever it gives me, um, you know, I would vet it. Um, and usually, you know, four of the five things it pulls are, are pretty good for me uh, when I'm doing my research. Um, uh, and uh, Scholar AI is really good at that. The other thing I like that it does is it gives me links uh, to the article. I'll pull the PDF link at the bottom of the summary uh, and the link up at the top so I can go in and vet it and decide if I really want to use it or not. Um, you know, it's not just giving me information like, you know, chat GPT 3.5, if I ask it to do something, it'll give me a bunch of information, 
but probably isn't going to attribute very much and definitely isn't going to give me much as far as links. But these plugins will do that for you. And you see here, it's giving me uh, these different uh, articles here, you know, very current 23, 2023, 2021, uh, which, you know, uh, regular chat GPT won't do. It'll only take you up to 2021. So anything, you know, uh, after 2021, you can't access. Uh, but here, because of the plugin, uh, it does. Um, so it gives me uh, uh, these uh, research articles, and I can go in and click on them, and it'll kick me out of ChatGPT, and it'll actually take me to the publications page, where you can read the abstract, download the article, you know, all these uh, different things. It actually takes me to the published site. Um, so um, useful. Um, but now I've got these, and let's say I wanted to do a Twitter thread with them. You know, reading through these, you know, would take some time uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, trying to, uh, you know, write uh, the the uh, thread uh, would take some time. But if you have ChatGPT do it for you, you can always go in and edit it and save a lot of time. Now, again, you would go through and vet all this and, and fact check it as you would with any tool uh, that you're using. Uh, that's the, the misconception a lot of people have about ChatGPT and other AI tools. They don't realize that, you know, 80% of the work is done by, you know, uh, the AI tool, but the 20% or more needs to be the human factor. Me going back and editing, uh, you know, and, and using uh, uh, my critical thinking skills uh, to decide whether or not I, you know, want to even use any of this at all, or uh, do I need to edit it some or edit it a lot uh, before taking and using it. Um, so it's starting to unpack the thread here. Notice it drops emojis in here. It gives me a lot of hashtags. I asked for viral hooks and, and hashtags in it. I mean, would I use all these hashtags? Probably not. Um, I, I would definitely take the emojis out, especially you know, on a, a very uh, you know serious uh, topic like this. You know, any news story, but you know they like to drop their little emojis in there. So uh, I would take those out. Uh, and, and then you know, you can read through here, go back. You can even pull the article links out if you want to include them in here. Um, sometimes they do show up in here in, in your viral threads, but I would probably include these in here, you know, because you see the author names here, you know, refers to a study and, you know, the hashtag. Uh, you can include the link in there as well. Gives you a few more hashtags that it incorporated in up here. I, again, you know, editing this would take just a fraction of the time to go through and actually do the writing with it. Uh, again, you know, you spend most of your time here fact checking, going back, looking through these uh, articles to see if, you know, they're legit and you really want to use them. Um, so Scholar AI, you know, take it and practice with it a little bit, see if it's useful to you. Uh, this could be uh, great for investigative reporters who are looking into a, a, a topic. Uh, maybe somebody's doing a deep dive in depth article where they're going to use scholarly research in it. Uh, you also have tools like Google Scholar, which are, are fantastic uh, as well. You know, I've got the same topic queued up here. Uh, but I would have to go through and, you know, really spend a lot of time going through all these articles where, you know, if you can get AI to do some of that work for you and spend your time editing and vetting the data um, or the information that it pulls, uh, you're going to be uh, much better off. Hope you found this useful. Uh, you can find a lot of these tools on journalstoolbox.ai. Uh, you can go in here, chat. We've got a whole page on chat GPT tools down at the bottom of that page. Uh, we've got uh, some training videos uh, as well as uh, several plugins listed uh, uh, down here uh, at the bottom. So, uh, you know, take advantage of this. It's a free website, journalisttoolbox.ai. Hope you found this training video useful. We'll have some more coming your way in future articles.